Welcome to Grab and Go Info. User-based collaborative filtering is also called user-user collaborative filtering. It is a type of recommendation system algorithm that uses user similarity to make product recommendations. In this tutorial, we will talk about what is user-based collaborative filtering, how to create a user product matrix, how to process data for user-based collaborative filtering, how to identify similar users, how to narrow down the items pool, how to rank items for the recommendation, how to predict the rating score. Let's get started. Firstly, let's understand how user-based collaborative filtering works. User-based collaborative filtering makes recommendations based on user product interactions in the past. The assumption behind the algorithm is that similar users like similar products. User-based collaborative filtering algorithm usually has the following steps. 1. Find similar users based on interactions with common items. 2. Identify the items rated high by similar users but have not been exposed to the active user of interest. 3. Calculate the weighted average score for each item. 4. Rank items based on the score and pick top end items to recommend. This graph illustrates how user-based collaborative filtering works using a simplified example. Ms. Blonde likes apples. Ms. Black likes watermelon and pineapple. Ms. Purple likes watermelon and grape. Because Ms. Black and Ms. Purple like the same fruit, they are similar users. Since Ms. Black likes pineapple and Ms. Purple has not been exposed to pineapple yet, the recommendation system recommends pineapple to Ms. Purple. In the first step, we will import Python libraries Pandas, Numpy, and Scipy. These three libraries are for data processing and calculations. We also imported Seaborn for visualization and cosine similarity for calculating similarity score. This tutorial uses the MovieLens dataset. This dataset contains actual user ratings of movies. In step 2, we will follow the steps below to get the datasets. 1. Go to grouplens.org slash dataset slash MovieLens. 2. Download the 100k dataset with the file name ML latest small dot zip. 3. Unzip ML latest small dot zip. 4. Copy the ML latest small folder to your project folder. Those who are using Google Call App for this analysis need to mount Google Drive to read the dataset. You can ignore the code below if you are not using Google Call App. There are multiple datasets in the 100k MovieLens folder. For this tutorial, we will use ratings in movies. Now let's read in the rating data. There are four columns in the ratings dataset. User ID, Movie ID, Rating, and Timestamp. The dataset has over 100k records, and there is no missing data. The 100k ratings are from 610 users on 9724 movies. The rating has 10 unique values from 0.5 to 5. Next, let's read in the movies data to get the movie names. The movies dataset has movie ID, title, and genres. Using Movie ID as the matching key, we appended movie information to the rating dataset and named it DF. So now we have the movie title and movie rating in the same dataset. In step 3, we need to filter the movies and keep only those with over 100 ratings for the analysis. This is to make the calculation manageable by the Google Colab memory. To do that, we first group the movies by title. Count the number of ratings and keep only the movies with greater than 100 ratings. The average ratings for the movies are calculated as well. From the info output, we can see that there are 134 movies left. Let's check the most popular movies and their ratings. Next, let's use a joint plot to check the correlation between the average rating and the number of ratings. We can see an upward trend from the scatter plot, showing that popular movies get higher ratings. The average rating distribution shows that most movies in the dataset have an average rating of around 4. The number of rating distribution shows that most movies have less than 150 ratings. To keep only the 134 movies with more than 100 ratings, we need to join the movie with the user rating level data frame. After filtering the movies with over 100 ratings, we have 597 users that rated 134 movies. In step 4, we will transform the dataset into a matrix format. The rows of the matrix are users, and the columns of the matrix are movies. 
The value of the matrix is the user rating of the movie if there is a rating. Otherwise, it shows NAN, since some people tend to give a higher rating than others. We normalize the rating by extracting the average rating of each user. After normalization, the movies with a rating less than the user's average rating get a negative value, and the movies with a rating more than the user's average rating get a positive value. In step 6, we will identify similar users. There are different ways to measure similarities. Pearson correlation and cosine similarity are two widely used methods. In this tutorial, we will calculate the user similarity matrix using Pearson correlation. Those who are interested in using cosine similarity can refer to this code. Since cosine similarity does not take missing values, we need to impute the missing values with zeros before the calculation. Now let's use user ID 1 as an example to illustrate how to find similar users. We first need to exclude user ID 1 from the similar user list and decide the number of similar users. In the user similarity matrix, the values range from minus 1 to 1, where minus 1 means opposite movie preference and 1 means same movie preference. N equals 10 means we would like to pick the top 10 most similar users for user ID 1. The user-based collaborative filtering makes recommendations based on users with similar tastes. So we need to set a positive threshold. Here we set the user similarity threshold to be 0.3, meaning that a user must have a Pearson correlation coefficient of at least 0.3 to be considered as a similar user. After setting the number of similar users and similarity threshold, we sort the user similarity value from the highest and lowest, then printed out the most similar user's ID and the Pearson correlation value. In step 7, we will narrow down the item pool by doing the following. 1. Remove the movies that have been watched by the target user. 2. Keep only the movies that similar users have watched. To remove the movies watched by the target user, we keep only the row for user ID equals 1 in the user item matrix and remove the items with missing values. To keep only the similar user's movies, we keep the user IDs in the top 10 similar user lists and remove the film with all missing values. All missing value for a movie means that none of the similar users have watched the movie. Next, we will drop the movies that user ID 1 watched from the similar user movie list. Errors equals ignore drops columns if they exist without giving an error message. In step 8, we will decide which movie to recommend to the target user. The recommended items are determined by the weighted average of user similarity score and movie rating. The movie ratings are weighted by the similarity scores. So the users with higher similarity get higher weights. This code loops through items and users to get the item score. Rank the score from high to low and pick the top 10 movies to recommend to user ID 1. If the goal is to choose the recommended items, having the rank of the items is enough. However, if the goal is to predict the user's rating, we need to add the user's average movie rating score back to the movie score. The average movie rating for user 1 is 4.39. So we add 4.39 back to the movie score. We can see that the top 10 recommended movies all have predicted ratings greater than 4.5. In this tutorial, we went over how to build a user-based collaborative filtering recommendation system. You learned what is user-based collaborative filtering, how to create a user product matrix, how to process data for user-based collaborative filtering, how to identify similar users, how to narrow down the items pool, how to rank items for the recommendation, how to predict the rating score. If you found the information in this tutorial helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. I publish tutorials on machine learning, deep learning, and big data processing every week. If you prefer the written version of the tutorial, please go to grabandgoinfo.com. I will put the link in the video description. This is the blog post for this tutorial. It has all the code and explanations in the video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.